How y'all doing? How y'all doing? This is Alvin with Trying Success here on the Old Fashioned Health Network. Good health inside and out. I have four amazing, powerful black women on my show today. Hey, 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 hey. Y'all see that? Hey, hey, hey. yeah, yeah. Excited and everything. So I'm not going to tell you, I asked about Wakanda and I was saying that there wasn't that many men on there. And they started cheering and carrying on. So we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of in my feelings a little bit. I mean, since Chad, y'all like, like, y'all don't want to talk about it. Catch anymore. flights, not feelings. Right. Here you <laughs> so, how do you all, how do you feel about the movie Wakanda versus the one that, um, what's her name? She just did one. She just did Women one. King. Woman that King. Good. That one was good. So you saw that? That was so good. Okay. Okay. One of my I'm gonna be honest. I feel I feel really bad, but I have not seen it. But I'm not plan on it because I have to support. I have to support. Um, what's her name? Viola Davis. Viola Davis. Viola Davis. Um, yep. Mm-hmm. Not what's her name? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, I, know. I knew you know. the movie was good. I brought my dad, and halfway through the movie, he whispered to me. He was like, "Man, I want to go beat somebody up right now." I said, "Yes, Dad. Yes." And that's what that's what we're all about. We're trying to create a platform for women to be vulnerable, to be open, to be themselves. And so we're all about women empowerment. I'm I'm about that action. It's time. I'm ready to step in. I'm just ready to go. So um, I'm serious. Like I think I think in our line of, of of work in sport, we're starting to see the ripple effect of not only women empowerment, but opportunities for women. So we've seen it happen with equal pay in sport. We've seen it happening with um, just opportunities and uh, career advancement. And I'm really just uh, wanting that to be sustainable and not necessarily a trend, but really, like Kayla said, um, while the pipelines are happening and opportunities are increasing, providing a space for women and specifically black women to be able to talk through and navigating issues. Cause you can build a space and you can create the room, but that doesn't mean the room is really refreshing, right? So like we go through things, we just have to be um, resilient, so. I'm just, I'm just loving the switch up. She came in strong, I'm about that action. <laughs> Why is it that um, people in general always think uh, that African-American woman is angry. What do y'all think? I think it's um, we're tired and we try to stay calm, mm-hmm. but we get pushed to our limits and it comes off as anger because we hold so much stuff in because we don't have the space mm-hmm. to say how we feel and we don't have people listening. So when it does come out, it might sound angry. That's, um, that's we've talked about this before as a group. That's my initial mm-hmm. thought. I was also going to say, because I feel like when people say angry or just classify an emotion, I'm like, what? what is telling you that I'm angry? Is it me raising my voice? Is it me talking stern? Is it because I'm like standing with my head held t- high? Like, what is angry? like? Or not like, smiling. Yeah, I was like, right. it, I was like, would you say the same for like, if a man was doing that or like a white woman? Like, I just want to no. know like, well now, now well, look, y'all, y'all know you don't hold your head up straight, and it, it's more like the neck roll and all that kind of thing. And y'all know you. Uh, let me keep my neck straight. Because the last time I, I don't know about neck. I know I talk with my hands, but neck roll is new for me. Yeah, it's like everyone doesn't do the neck roll. I have. Mm-mm. Alvin, let me no. tell you something. There's been two times in my life, in my 29 years of my life, where my neck has rolled significantly, and I would agree. However, it takes a lot for me to get there. Right. But for me, when I'm not smiling or when I have a straight face, like that's natural for me. Like I'm thinking about so many different things. So the mm-hmm. assumption is that I'm about to pop off, which I could, but I choose not to. Um, the assumption is I'm about to pop off, but really I'm just trying to manage all kinds of past things that have happened and not take it out on you. So like, I just think that like, it's, it's like having a bunch of each microaggression that we have and that we receive is a mosquito bite. And by the time we done with the dang month, we swollen. So we about to blow up. Like (laughs) it just adds on. And I don't know, sometimes I've seen red. I call being really angry, seeing red and it's happened twice in my life, highly warranted, but it doesn't happen too often. Grace, Kim, what you got? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little hothead, so. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. No. I am. Not I'm a Grace. little 
just a little bit but the reason why i get this way is because it's like you're not listening to me when i'm being calm when i'm trying to articulate trying to communicate my feelings when i'm calm you don't want to listen i'm ignored but then when i pop my eyeballs and i pop my head and i start snapping my fingers now you want to listen why does it have to get to the point though why does it have to get me being angry for you to listen to something that I said five different times in a calm, peaceful manner. It's just like with my student athletes. I asked you three times to write this essay, three times. Now you wanna wait till 11 o'clock and it's due at 11.59. And now I'm about to be nice. Why is it, write this essay right now, I'm not about to play with you. Why does it have to come to that for you to write it when I asked you three times nicely? So it's just like that, it's like, why can't, why does it why do people feel that they need to push black women to the limit for them to listen to them mm. that's the part that kills me mm. I, i'll also so i know i asked a question earlier that wasn't really my response it was just trying to clarify but i know for me as you can see on this call i smile a lot and mm. i think i smile a lot of people into smiling so when people see me kind of like not smiling they automatically mm. assume the world is ending when really I could just, like Sable said, be thinking about a lot of stuff or maybe it's not a smiling situation. Like right. I, I think I naturally <laughs> smile just cause, but like when I'm- It's not I, a smile situation. Yeah, okay. I just, like with Grace, I just need you to do what I say at this particular time. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you all believe, you hear a lot more about people uh, needing counseling or need to talk to somebody, get you a counselor to, bounce things off all the time. Do you think that's like more of a trend out of the, just to be part of the trend or do you think there that's something people really need to have a therapist? Sometimes we need somebody to talk to. Do you all think that's part of a trend or do you think that's something that's warranted? I think to be honest with you, um, I feel like is now not becoming so much of a taboo within our community to talk about either seeking counsel or therapy because it's like either give it to God or like, you know, whatever the thing may be. Um, I actually heard on a podcast recently that therapy is almost like maintaining your self-care. It's another form of self-care. And so a lot of times like we have so much stuff going going coming at us and we have to problem solve and a lot of times you just don't know what to do so talking it with somebody who's trained in that area is more so like helping you work through your problem solving as opposed to bringing problems to them i think therapy is kind of sanctioned as like oh you got to be going through life in order to see somebody when it's like no i just need maintenance of my mind or i don't know something like that yeah i i'm someone who is a huge performance proponent of therapy I really feel like it's changed my life like and saved me from a lot of situations and things the thing about therapy for me is that I think there's times in your life where you might need more frequency of therapy than you might in other seasons of your life so I think like of course there's some people who need to see a therapist every single week or at a higher cadence than um, maybe not. So I think like for me, a goal when I'm seeing therapy and transparently, like right now, I'm like, I need to up my cadence. Like I need to go see someone a little bit more frequently, but my goal is to get to a point where it's not as frequent. Like it's a more of a maintenance, um, practice or like self care for me, but there's just some times where the frequency needs to be higher or whatever. So there's been, I specifically, there's been times in my life where I definitely should have had a therapist as a student athlete. I 100% should have had a therapist, but mm -hmm. when I got out of being a student athlete, I was just dealing with a lot of life things um, and therapy literally, cause if I didn't go to therapy, like I, it like literally was, would have been really dangerous. So I'm always gonna vote for therapy. But I do think some people um, have to like really understand the realness of therapy. Like you can't just go online and find a therapist. Like it's a journey. It is, you have to stick mm -hmm. with it. To, it's not easy just to like, it's almost like finding a partner. Like you can go on, you can't, the first date, like normally, I mean, shoot, you gotta get to know somebody. Like you can't just be open, all open, you know? So it's a whole process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think me and Sable actually were just talking about this this weekend, a lot, like for a long time. And I think in our community, we're not used to having access. Um, and I, talking to my mom, I think we're as Black people just really used to being in survival mode. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have a chance 
we haven't been afforded the chance to be able to sit back with our thoughts because it's been go, 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 go. Or how do I stay alive? How do I do this, do that, take care of my family? And our generation has a luxury to slow down a little bit. But with slowing down, I think a part of that is dealing with our emotions a little bit more and going to therapy to do that. So it's just... I like I talked to my mom for so long about that this weekend. Just our our generation is different and we're taking advantage of these opportunities that our grandmothers, great grandmothers, grandfathers haven't had. But I think it's super important because there's so many things from your childhood, even or experiences that you don't realize have an impact on your actions Mm -hmm. and someone that doesn't know you fully and has training to understand these things. Mm can help you uncover because if you don't resolve those things within you, it just can manifest in some bad ways or some negative ways. So I'm a huge proponent of it. I go every Thursday, so (laughs) I'm all for it. Great. (laughs) Kayla, that's so cute. Um, (laughs) I agree. I think therapy is important. I think the key to Finding a good therapist, just like how stable is staying when you're dating, is just like looking around and just making sure everything is the right fit. Um, I had a really good therapist when I was living in Illinois, and then when I moved, I couldn't have her anymore, and I felt like she broke up with me. Like, I felt like, you know, because she knew everything about me. Like, that was my girl. Like, I just felt like we had broke up. It was really sad. Um, But it takes time um and i think you have to also have to figure out why you want to go to therapy like what's your purpose like i know for me i was dealing with a lot of stress and a lot of anger and i had to figure out a way to combat that so that's why i went but i feel like you need to find or know your purpose of why you're gonna go and i think you'll maximize the most out of the opportunity when you know why you're actually going what's the difference between a therapist and a best friend that you really really trust that you talk to about every yeah. Yeah. The therapist will mind reading you while your friend probably won't spare your feelings. So I think a therapist, they have no ties to you personally, so they have no problem kind of calling you out on the things that you do. As a best friend, at some point, I know you kind of like try to help your friend recognize their tendency or help them work through stuff. And I mean, I don't know about y'all, but a lot of times you be like, mm, okay, I, I hear you, but like, I don't really hear you as opposed to like somebody who don't know you and calls those things out. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I have some best friends that are really good for just simply pulling up. Like they just tell me, I, I tell them my issue and they're like, what's up? Where are we meeting? Like what we need to do? And that's how the problem is solved versus yeah, a like therapist. The <laughs> like... <laughs> A therapist is like, what is our action plan? What did you think about, like, let's dissect these issues so that this doesn't happen again? Whereas my best friend's like, "Uh, okay, like, are you good? Oh, (laughs) what's up? Like, who are we talking about? Just send me the answer. Are we talking about, instead of being like, ma'am, what was your responsibility in this, though? Because, like, (laughs) it's a two-way street. Some of my best friends, they just, that look, it's a different role. But in all seriousness, I really do think that a therapist can help you recognize your responsibility in situations and then also help you have grace for yourself for um, family patterns that you just didn't even realize before, right? So like a trained professional can really understand those types of things mm-hmm. whereas like my best friend she's probably like hey like she probably sees like hey i see sometimes like you and your mom you don't really vibe like your mom be mm-hmm. tripping sometimes i know right sis versus a therapist is like let's talk about the patterns like generational patterns and things right. like that like really and then having grace for yourself um because of those things like i just think it's more of a action plan and making sure that that situation doesn't happen again or being able to recognize your responsibility and things versus a best friend just supporting emotionally and if so and needing to pull up they can so grace so what's your thoughts between the best friend and the trained therapist so i think it depends on the friend you're talking to but I think that a therapist is like they're professional, just like you would go to if you want to learn how to ice skate, you're going to go to a professional ice skater to learn how to ice skate. You're not going to ask your mom who might have ice skated in the park occasionally. Like, I feel like when I go to therapists, I'm going because I want a professional opinion. Like I want tips on things they were trained to do to help me. 
Um, and I know my best friends, they give great advice. And I feel like there's certain things that you approach your best friends with. But I know there's certain things that I'll approach my therapist with. They're trained professionals that can help you dig deeper into your issues. Unless your best friend is a trained therapist, which they might be. But I think it's just a big difference. Much. I appreciate it. This was so much fun. Uh, this is fun. I, I look to be on y'all's show again. Yes, please. Because y'all take it easy. Y'all have a nice rest of the week. Thank and you so much. Too much. Thank you. All right, y'all take it easy. All right. Bye. 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 <laughs>